What's up, Tutorinos? Welcome back to the Game Addicts Podcast, the show where we're talking about the modern retro video games that we play and collect. I am this podcast player, one Brando, and joining me here today is this podcast player, two Mike. Oh, hello. Hello, 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 good sir. It is episode 124. It's our official E3 2019 preview episode. We are pre recording this. We're not 100% live, so if there's any late breaking news that has happened between like with the time that we've recorded this, which is like the day after we recorded the last episode and where we normally air. Uh, maybe I'll do a live stream or something just to, blah, blah, blah. but uh, no, you're going on, it on at the end. Maybe so. Maybe so. I mean, it'll be done. Knowing me, I like to get stuff edited and done and that way I don't have to worry about it. Cause then I've had this happen in the, in the past where I get it done. I'm like, all right, I can go edit this later. And then I'll just forget. And then it'll be like the day of I'm like that was supposed to go live today. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go and get that done. Anyway, uh, E3 is right around the corner. You will be going on a separate shift for about a week. Yep. And uh, so we're going to pre- the uh, sinus surgery post-op. Exactly. Yeah. And then you have another another uh, appointment, too, or something going on. You have like two different appointments next week. It makes sense for you just to just to switch shifts that we don't have to worry about missing time from work. And it's... because of that, we'll be on separate shifts and we won't be able to really record a live episode. And of course, we're not going to record an episode for leading up into E3. We've been discussing it week in, week out. Little things get revealed here and there. Of course, last week we had the big Death Stranding uh, trailer and reveal for that and, the, and then release date. Uh, just today, as we record this, it was the, the new Call of Duty trailer and, re- re- and release something is October or whatever. <laughs> He's like, I don't care. Well, it, it, it's it's when it always is. It's either October, or November, around that time. I, but you know, it's coming out. It's Infinity Ward, I think. Again, it, it's it's Modern Warfare, no number, and uh, that's about the extent of it. I didn't watch the trailer. I don't really care. If you guys care, please go watch it. But that's the extent of my coverage. I, um, I really am not that interested. And in, uh, Call of Duty's never been my thing. You know. Uh, being straight up and always be honest with you guys, it's never really been. Just like Battle Royals aren't my thing. I don't really play them. Mike does. He plays them a lot. He he loves Battle Royals. Now. now. <laughs> I didn't before. No, man. You talked you talked just like, just as much crap about him as I did. I did. I hate Battle Royale games. I there's parts in this where I hate it. Cause like I don't like getting screwed over. Like So, uh, people that know Battle Royale, you launch out of a flying aircraft and fall down onto a battlefield, scavenge weapons and fight. So, I don't like when people drop right into the center because you are 100% surrounded, guaranteed, and there's probably five or six dudes already there, which I like to take my time, weasel in and out, and that gets you the long game. But if you drop in, you can get like 10 or 15 kills really quick and then get killed, but you get a lot of kills. I want to win. If I play a game to win. So it drives me nuts. But it says that we should learn more, including details of multiplayer components at E3 next month. Will be Call of Duty Modern Warfare Reboot will be launching on the Xbox One, PS4, and PC on October 25th. 25th. All right. Well, uh, there's another game that got revealed today. And that is the, and this is before we get into the E3 stuff, uh, of course. But uh, the Ghostbusters, the video game, the, re- the remaster. <laughs> so, in uh, celebrate the 35th anniversary uh, for Ghostbusters, the game that came out like 2008 or 2009 for the, uh, it was for the PS3, the Xbox 360, and then there was a different 
like cartoony version of the same game that was for the PS2 and the Wii. Uh, this is the remaster of the uh, of, of the 360 PS3 version coming out for PS4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch. And on the PC, it'll be exclusive to Epic Game Store. My question is, will it have mod support on PC? Because mm. this is very important. Because if it has mod support on PC, that and basically allows players to add to the Ghostbusters world as much as they want. So you could actually get some of the iconic fights. Somebody could recreate it and you could do it. Mm. And for me, if that is a thing on PC, that's where I'm getting it because I want it on the Switch for mobility and it, it would be cool to have it. But if it's on PC, that would be so cool to literally just be like, okay, well, I want to play the um, Ghostbusters 2 Literally, I want to play through Ghostbusters the movie too mm-hmm. on my PC, Dink. and you could play through the whole scenario. I think that'd be freaking cool. But it would be cool. I doubt it. I I highly doubt it. I do too. But uh, but uh, yeah, dude. Uh, we got some other few other things to talk about, which will be interwoven into the overall. Uh, patchwork how we're going to be doing this because we're going to run down the schedule for the e3 press conferences and we're going to go through what has been announced yeah. what we think we'll see you know uh, you know what, uh, first off what we know we're going to see and then predictions for each one so uh for the schedule the first one up is ea ea exactly. good old ea ea play is on saturday june 8th it'll be starting oh right about uh like uh, like 9 30 uh pacific time so it's like like was it 12 30 time around here uh, let's see, was it 10 you're 11? talking about the ea play ea play yeah it's like 12 30 mine says it starts at 9 15 it's pacific standard time right so, and that's like eastern time that'd be 12 30 yeah 12 15 yeah so and they, they've already announced the whole rundown for what they're gonna be talking about there's gonna be no surprises as as we know of yet they, no one ea probably not Yes. But uh, we're going to get a half hour of each game, uh, talking to the creators, seeing gameplay, seeing well, like a trailer or something, right? The first one on the docket is, of course, the mo- one that everybody's excited about. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Now these are by the guys that made Apex Legends and Titanfall. So it's going to be interesting to see because so far they've had solid good game i mean apex is on top of the charts right now but that's trending i don't really like that but titanfall 2 has sales have significantly increased due to apex legends Mm -hmm. because people are like hey man what do these guys got and it looks awesome yeah dude uh and that's the next one up on the docket at 10 a.m pacific that would be uh, apex legends we're probably gonna be seeing a lot of season two stuff some stuff was already announced uh today so some new stuff coming out for that and we're probably going to be seeing a lot more and then uh battlefield 5 more stuff fifa madden sims 4 uh new entries for the for the sports games then sims probably another expansion or something but, uh, you know, uh, nothing on Anthem. Uh, you know, we, we, we talked about last week how Anthem has been radio silent. Yes. We talked about how Anthem, uh, it, it, player count is, 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 is dwindling and how they've been radio silent. They actually came out today with a live stream about the update that just got released. So that's the first time that, that they have spoken about anything for a while. But there's something that we wanted to do. Yes. Something that we wanted to do because we talked about it last week. We talked about it last week, and that's you can go on your uh, go on the Microsoft. You can look up the the top fifty or top forty one most played games on the Xbox One, and uh, you can go on, just off purely online multiplayer. But it, but it, but it, but if you go to any number of players and it, and it bumps it up, uh, no, I guess. To no results found at all, but let's just go 49. Okay, so the, these are the 49. And, of course, uh, Anthem is not in the top 
49 top 50 games whatsoever. <sighs> we had a laugh about it last week, about some of the titles on here, and we're going to count them down from 49. From 49? Oh, I'm on the wrong one then. I'll take online multiplayer. Yeah, I just took it off because uh, because uh, some of these are even funnier. Because not all of these are even multiplayer. Some of these are just single player. There's uh, only about eight that are single player. Sure, but let's just run through them. And, okay. the, and coming in, and coming in at last place is Battlefield One. Coming not, in at. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say not even the most recent Battlefield. That's like right. the one for a, yeah. From, from before that one. So literally this one, which is out, out basically out playing <laughs> a brand new, you know, Bioware game here. Mm. So uh, the next one is Brawlhalla. Brawlhalla. It looks like it's got Hellboy on the cover. It looks like a, it, does. it is Hellboy. Yeah. And th this next one is the one that cracked me up last week. I lost it. This is hilarious to me. Are you going to say it or do you want me to say it? Oh, I figured we'd run back and forth, but I oh. guess I can say this one because I played the crap out of it. Uh, yeah. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 for the Xbox 360 <laughs> is, has a higher player base. This still gets me, man. Than freaking Anthem. I... I don't blame Bioware. I don't. I think that EA basically said, hey, we want another game that's really based off of the online multiplayer of your games because we all loved Mass Effect, and they made so much money off those boxes. Hell, they made a lot of money off of our group. Specifically Jay. Specifically Jay. <laughs> I, I was one of the people, like, if I bought something on the store, so let's say when I bought um, my FF7, FF8, FF9, and uh, Legend of Dragoon, I had money left over, so I bought boxes. And, you know, that's I already put that money on there. I, I mm -hmm. had to put $50 on there. Well, if you remember, we, had, we, you know, we played on the 360 back then when it was still points. Right. And so nothing ever evened out. You always had like 200 points left over. And it was always oh, really right. weird. So whether or not, yeah. you know, for me, I, if, if I bought uh, one of the DLCs, you know. I don't it, know how I got points on Xbox 360. I never bought anything on there. You would buy packs occasionally. and you, I know, but I never really. I, I remember saying, well, I've got enough money to buy a pack. I'll just put it on there. I can't remember what I bought. That would say, make me say I've got enough money on here to buy because well, I don't buy digitally. Well, you probably had maybe like uh, season passes for like Call of Duties, DLCs. That See, I bought off. all that together in the packs when I bought them. Well, uh, then I don't know what you did, dude. I, I don't I, know what it is. I don't know is. either. Maybe I changed my name or something. I was trying to change my name back to the original. Because for me, I would always get DLCs. You know, occasionally I'd buy a digital game if it was only available on digital. I remember buying, um, oh crap, uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Yeah, it was like, it was like that retro two uh, D fighter and a side scroller. So I remember, you know, if I had them left over, you know, occasionally, because eventually they did shift it over where you could put real money on there, and they did, they got rid of the right. points. But, but either way, they made a lot of money off that and Dragon Age. Yeah. Dragon Age was a blast to play. Mass Effect 3 was a blast to play. Heck, I'll even go out and say I enjoyed playing on um, Andromeda multiplayer. I mean, it was just more of the same. I enjoyed that. But EA and their endless amount of greed want a game to be FIFA and Madden. They, that's the numbers they want. But you're not going to get that. So they're wanting, oh, well, this was doing good. Why don't you make a game about this? Mm -hmm. Well, now, when you get on Anthem, you can't even get into a matchmaking game. It sends you individually because there are not enough players to play with. Last time I checked, there are 491 people viewing other people playing the game. But on the site that I went to, Bioware and EA have it blocked 
to where you cannot see the current player count in game on console or PC. And that was kind of the whole point of, of talking about this because all of these, it's not even in the top 50 because after Call of Duty, I'm just going to run through some of these pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, uh, Dead by Daylight Special Edition. Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2. Gears of War 4. And then Halo the Master Chief Collection. WWE 2K19. Mortal Kombat 10. Not even the newest one. It's 10. I assume the newest one's higher up. The Sims 4. The Golf Club 2019. NHL 19, which is free in June, by the way, if you have Xbox uh, Live, which is pretty cool. Uh, then it's Ghost Recon Wildlands. That came out last year or a year before last. Right. And this game came out last year, was a huge success, and is available on Game Pass. Monster so Hunter World. You. Yes, I want to stop you. Golf, you said the golf club is currently free. You said EA Sports NHL is next week, but right now you guys can go out and grab golf club. Oh, golf club. PGA Tour. Yeah. That it was May. Right here. Gold, yeah, free with gold. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next week, next month is, 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 is NHL. But well, as I, you said, Monster Hunter World is free right now with Game Pass. You have Game Pass. And Get it. it. Is a, and Warframe, which I played this before, so Warframe basically said they were free. Like, it was one of the first games I remember downloading for free on my PS4. And it is one of the few games that I can say that constantly update all the time. They, uh, they saw where Destiny was winning with the open world, so they went ahead and changed their entire game to be open world and made it free for the players. Constant updates monthly. It's a good game, and it's still free. Mm -hmm. Pick it up if you don't have it, if you like that kind of game. Up next is Battlefront 2, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Then Halo new 5 version, Guardians. New version. And then uh, The Elder Scrolls Online. Tamriel Edition. Unlimited. NBA 2K18. Fallout 76. It's on the list. It's it's right it's smack dab in the middle, dude. It's still hanging in there. And then it's Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And then uh, Fallout 4. Skyrim. Sea of Thieves. Call of Duty World War II. Yeah. Smite. Then we have Battlefield 5. For Honor, Standard Edition. Yeah. Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Tom Clancy's The Division 2, which is a game... That is similar in style to Anthem. Yes, it is. Doing much better than Anthem. Yep. Uh, after that is uh, FIFA 19. And then you've got Forza Horizon 4, uh, PUBG, mm -hmm. and uh, Madden NFL 19, Mortal Kombat 11. So that is not far from the top there. I no. would say 5, 10... That is number 13. And still, up in the top is Destiny 2. And then Dauntless, Overwatch, uh, Ark, uh, Rocket League. Still, <laughs> still is a very popular game. Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, Minecraft. I, so, I'm touch base on Minecraft. I always believe it's going to be in the top 10. It's the same. It is one of the biggest games that's been put out in a very long time. I agree. And then, uh, what was that? Roblox. Roblox. And then coming in is your Battle Royale game, Apex Legends. And then Grand Theft Auto V, the new Call of Duty Black Ops 4, uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, NBA 2K19, and then in the top is Fortnite. Yep. So, yeah, just and you know, Anthem nowhere near there. Anthem nowhere near EA Play. <sighs> yeah, man, this is it, it's not good, man. It's not good. Of course, then we also have all the other news that we had already heard saying that you know the project leads had already left Anthem and going on to uh, to to really kickstart Dragon Age. And uh, man, I just wish them luck. I I, I don't want it to fail. 
I think that we will see a good Dragon Age game. And I think that we will also see another really good Mass Effect game. I hope so. I really but do I, hope so. That I'm hoping that this is a shell shock to EA like, hey, this is not a multiplayer franchise. Let them do their job. And I, it's like yeah. Respawn with uh, Jedi Fallen Order. They are preaching left and right. No loot boxes. No online. Single player RPG. Single player RPG. Single player RPG. Like they, they're just hammering at home like, hey guys, we are not following the trends here. They're letting us do what we want to do. We just want to let you know. Yeah. Um, it's sad. It really is. It is. Uh, I, I am a huge Bioware fan. I did try the, you know, the demo or uh, beta for Anthem. Uh, and I, I, I've said it here on the show before. I've enjoyed the, I, I enjoyed what I played, but it just wasn't for me. I'm, I'm not the, I don't want to play in a group with people every time I want to play the game. I just don't want that. I want to be able to get in with my characters. Let's go and let's have a good time. If I could play that same game with computer characters with me, I would, I would enjoy it probably. It, because I don't it, think you would. I think that you would enjoy it to begin with, but you would get extremely frustrated with the lack of story. Well, as I was going to say before you interrupted me, I would enjoy it. Sorry, sir. If... If, because at that point, if they're if they're making it to where it's got to be single player, that means they would force their hand at putting more story in and interweaving more story throughout the narrative. So moving on the next day, yeah. Sunday uh, at uh, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern is Microsoft Xbox hitting it. And it's going to be a two hour presentation. Buddy. Uh, we hitting up as we go through like hey this is open starting sunday are we just going to go through what's on there what we believe is going to be in there yes well we're going to get there uh the first um definitely definitely uh you know with them being two hours with no sony uh there's going to be a lot to show and also we are going to be airing and streaming live during uh, during the press conference right here uh, so do tune in to us on Twitch and we will be streaming live over there on that platform. I think we might just stick to Twitch. We might not. I mean, maybe we'll do both through mob crush, but I don't know. Right. Check. You know, I believe that even if Sony had a presence this year at E3, I think with the uh, software studios that Microsoft has collected over the past year, and that's including the E3 of them revealing the studios that they've picked up. I think that they would have still won because I think we are going to get some of the titles that we've all been longing for. And that's very exciting, like Fable, a new Fable game. I mean, it's it's intriguing. So, of course, we're going to be getting probably Gears 5. That's coming out this year. Uh, I have no doubt that we're going to get our first sneak peek at the next yeah. generation Xbox, which definitely means that we're going to get Halo, because Halo Infinite is rumored to be a launch title for that. We're probably going to be getting, uh, probably, they're going to spend a lot of time talking about their streaming platform. We already know that. Uh, Phil Spencer came out after the Google Stadia. It was pretty much like, Hey, they did a great job. Stay tuned for ours. Uh, and, uh, and then we know uh, Sony's in bed with them with the streaming. We know Nintendo rumored to be as well. They're going to be showcasing the X Cloud and what it can do for gaming, what they're bringing to the table. Uh, I have no doubt that they're going to be announcing. And they already did. They already did announce this just uh, just just today. A Game Pass officially coming to PC. Right. And not just like the games they already have, but I mean over a hundred games, just like you have over on on the console, 
And uh, Phil Spencer took to the official Xbox website to reveal that what Xbox has in store for PC gamers. Unfortunately, he can't provide he doesn't provide a release date for the service, but does divulge some details that more will be shared at E3. We believe that the players should be at the center of their gaming experience and uh, be able to harness the unique benefits of the devices that they choose to play on. He continues that nowhere is that belief more important than on the PC. As the creators of Windows, we have a unique responsibility to ensure that we're investing in experiences that benefit players everywhere while respecting the PC's community preference for an open, highly customizable platform. He continues, We've not always lived up to our aspiration of keeping gamers at the center of everything we do when it comes to the experience that they've had on Windows. Today, I'd like to share three steps that we are taking to contribute to the thriving PC gaming ecosystem. According to Spencer, Xbox Game Pass for PC will give gamers unlimited access to a curated library of over 100 PC games on Windows 10 at launch, including titles from well-known de developers and publishers like Bethesda, Deep Silver, de uh, Devolver, Devolver Digital, Para Paradox Interactive, and Sega. Meanwhile, new games from Xbox Game Studios will release on Xbox Game Pass on PC on the same day release, just like on the consoles. Whew. Yeah. Buddy, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes. I'm excited. I'm so excited for what Xbox is bringing because it's so different uh, from what the other uh, competitors for them are, are bringing. They are more focused on getting their games everywhere that they can, just like we've talked about in the past, whether that's going to be through their streaming thing, through the Game Pass thing. For $10 a month, you get have a hundred access to a hundred uh, to a hundred games on like on your PC that and that includes every Forza they'll ever make every Halo they'll ever make everything every Fable it yeah oh yeah uh so as terms of in terms of third party for Microsoft what do you think is going to be there because I have a few ideas but I'll let you go first. I actually am looking at a list of some stuff. Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Ori and the Will of the Wisps. That is a uh, Xbox Game Studios mm -hmm. uh, uh, exclusive, so uh, or original. So that will be. I guarantee we'll we'll probably see that because that's coming out sometime. In, yeah, it's uh, to be announced, but I think that we'll see that. Um, another rumored one is Tunic. That is for PC, Xbox One. Uh, uh, yet again, I cannot see what these say, um, but I I don't know. I want to see Fable. Me too. Give me Fable. I want it. Um, outside of that, I think you know we're looking at a lot like Halo. We're obviously going to get Halo. We're going to see Gears. There's no way we're not going to see that. Um. Man, I just don't know for just Xbox. Like, there's something on here, a Rocket Arena. I don't know what that is. I haven't seen any information on that. I just, I don't know. Uh, I I can't. They've got so many studios out there that it's. Do you other think than the ones that we know? Do you think I mean, that? get some some of the the outer worlds and we're going to get a release date yeah at x at the microsoft and that by, by the way that's going to launch on all three platforms pc xbox one and ps4 no switch as of now but we're, they own that studio now so they're going to show it off at theirs so what about since last year, we saw Forza Horizon 4, uh, the next main series of Forza. Right. You could probably see that. Oh, Forza, Forza 8? Yeah. Yeah, because 7. Maybe. we. I think that that will be a... They might showcase that with the whatever the new Xbox system is going to be called. I think Halo Infinite. And possibly a um, Forza game will be shown. 
with that system. So that might be the first time because Halo looks good. They've already showed a little bit of Halo. Mm -hmm. Maybe now we'll get a little bit with it on uh, the new architecture and um, maybe a sneak peek at, like you said, a Forza game, which uh, racing games really show the capability of a system because it, there's a lot going on. Like first person shooters, yeah, that's they're all right, but you know you're talking 200, 300 miles an hour. Things still have to look clear as they're passing by you. I would like to see it, but I, I don't know. I mean, I don't. I can The only games that I can really say for a fact that are going to be there are obviously Halo. I think we're going to see something from Fable. I, I'm almost hundred percent sure. Mm -hmm. I yeah. And, yeah, I really there's do. There's no hope. way. I mean, th there's been teasing drops everywhere. So it's like, come on. People like, hey, this studio is working on a open world game. Hint, hint. Right. It's a Microsoft exclusive. Hint, hint. Um, now, w could there be something that is more fruitful because we just heard something about uh call of duty is going to be cross-platform cross ps4 yeah xbox one and pc all those gamers can now play together that's awesome you know playstation is finally kind of coming around with this whole cross-platform thing letting their gamers intertwine with xbox gamers and letting all these nodes and servers communicate with each other could there be something a little bit more going in from the Sony stuff that they've been negotiating with in terms of cross-play. Could Xbox be trying to get, like, hey, of course, I mean, I'm thinking about one of uh, Xbox's or Microsoft's biggest cross-platform game that they have, and that's Minecraft. We already mentioned that earlier. It's always going to be in the top right. ten of every system. So, And, of course, as of right now, you can't cross that with PlayStation. What if they say, hey, now... Through our new partnership with Sony, we're proud to announce that you'll be able to connect with your friends over on PlayStation through Minecraft. It's Maybe. something small. It's not a major thing, but it's like a, you know, we're really excited to be working with Sony, you know. Right. One of the things that bugs me about the crossplay is that it's always been hard to put PC in with uh, consoles. Because mm -hmm. there's such a large difference between mouse and keyboard and controller. So net now anymore, a, a guy at work plays uh, Apex, and he actually bought a nice um, keyboard and mouse and plugs it into his PS4, and he sits at his desk and plays it on his gaming monitor. So... Maybe it's not that big of a gap anymore. I don't know. Well, and uh, we also have like um, the official Xbox keyboard and mouses that are being developed with other, right. you know, with all this kind of stuff. So that could be coming as well. But uh, one thing I think is going to be there, uh, Cyberpunk. Yeah, and I think that we're going to get a pushback date. Well, well, we never really got a release anything. We never Just kind of a window. They never even really gave that. They just said, "Eh, next year." Uh, right. So I think we're I think we're gonna get a, a actual release window, uh, because of course the Jason Schreier, as we said from Kotaku last week, it's not coming out this year. So I'm betting on before the end of the be, before the end of the fiscal year. So um, moving on, moving on from moving Xbox, on. our good buddies over at Bethesda. So, I will not be streaming this one with you due to the fact that I I cannot fathom that it is a brilliant move for them to not do Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6. I do not understand what they're going to have to bring to the table. Well, they showed some stuff last year with uh, the new Wolfenstein. Uh, was it Young Blood? The, there may be a, a tease at the next actual core entry of Wolfenstein. Maybe uh, there's probably going to be uh, Doom. Was it Doom Eternal? I, is that what it's called? Yes. Uh, so there's that. 
Uh, probably going to be seeing like a uh, DLC or something for Rage 2. So that'll be out. Uh, Elder Scrolls Blades. Probably see some of that. And see where that's coming from. Will they mention 76? I think they will. I think they're going to uh, try to do their best to fix it. Um, I've heard, you know, like some rumors are going to try and do a lot of a lot. There's so, there's so many things that they could try to do. Maybe we'll get an announcement for your bag. <laughs> All bastards. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. You know, uh, there's there's been hints of another Elder Scrolls Online being in, be, being in put into development. Uh, uh, there is one, and it is already out. Hmm. Or it's going to be out, and that's... Uh, okay, I'm going to slay this, so... Um, elsewhere? Else, E-L-S? Elsewhere, yeah. W E, Yeah. It's in early access right now, so I'm assuming that is going to be something that they show. That was... Well, it should be out now. This is that was this May twentieth. So, we've got that. Uh, I yeah, I don't know. Uh, Wolfenstein's coming out in July. Uh, is that the Young Blood or? Mm-hmm. So and then Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal is quarter four. It just says Q four. Okay, so we're gonna be seeing those two for sure. Big things on those two. Now, they've already said they're not showing Starfield, and they're not showing. Elder Scrolls 6. I know. They teased both those, and supposedly Starfield was going to be one of their newer games, newer IPs that were coming out soon. And I'm not very happy that it's not going to be there. Um, both those games just got a, what, what do you think, 15 seconds of a, here is. It exists. And, yeah, it exists. We, we're doing it. Same way with Elder Scrolls Six. It's like, okay, guys, you, you, you announced these last year that they're going to be a thing, and we want updates. And then you turn around and say, these will not be there. Now, I'm watching this with my wife just in case that was a BS because she is very big on the Elder Scrolls series and well specifically Skyrim the other rest of them she really doesn't like but I just I what are you thinking Bethesda like what are you going to show us that's going to be like okay we're not mad about 76 anymore Not much. I don't know. I really don't know. But I'm looking forward to streaming that live. So I could just sit here and do this the whole time. <laughs> it's going to be... And Shane just, you were the chosen one! They have long since not been the chosen ones. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you're right. But uh, moving on from Bethesda, we have Ubisoft. It's going to be uh, on Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Well, you got the PC game show. <sighs> Nobody watches that. Hey, <laughs> I will. It's at 1 a.m. So, yeah. What time is it? It is Monday at 1300 Eastern time. Well, the one, the one, then what's 1300 again? It's 1 o'clock. 1 p.m.? P.m. I will not be at work. Wait. Well, you, yeah, you, I will. you said 1 a.m. Yeah, you're right. My bad. I forgot I was that gonna I was going back today. So say, if, if, if it was at 1 a.m., people really aren't going to watch this thing. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, of course, yeah, this is... PC game show. Don't you shut them out. Powered by the Epic Games Store. They're going to be uh, gonna be doing some stuff. Anyway, on to, on, 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 on to Ubisoft here. Uh, <laughs> You're going to be doing some stuff. <laughs> Look at you. Anywho. 
uh, they're going to be there. They're going to be uh, look. Uh, they're going to be sponsoring the show by Epic Game Store along with uh, Frontier Developments, Paradox Interactive, Chucklefish, Digital Extremes, and Funcom. Sean Day Nine Plot will return to host, and participants will be announced as we near the show. They haven't even said what they're showing, so they're. Um, what well, I mean, what do you expect is going to be at, at the PC game show? Every time I ever watch that, it just looks like a like a Tonight Show, like where they have a desk and a dude sitting there hosting. They usually do a lot of. Um I don't know. I don't, like they usually do a lot of stuff that's on Steam that's coming out on Steam that looks really cool. Like they might do the on uh, Steam. Yeah. Say so not 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 this year. It's going to be. Uh, I don't know what Epic's going to show them because I only know a handful of games. Maybe we're going to see some of the games that I mean. I got to pull up Epic Game Store to know what they have that's coming soon. You don't even know. I don't know off the top of my head. No. Of course you don't. No, I don't have a memory like you, or I don't have a photographic memory, okay? I, I don't know I, if I'd call it photographic. You do. I want to hear, I don't know if I'd call it photographic. Yes, you do, because you can literally reverberate things verbatim back. Anywho. I mean, I have a good memory, but it doesn't mean it's photographic. They've got Rune 2. Rune 2. Um. Yeah, the, they also have the Ghostbusters thing, so maybe we'll see a little bit of that on there. Um, Complete with mods. Pathless, that, I would be happy. Also, Bloodlines 2. Huh? And then you've got... Maybe we'll see a little bit from Outer... I, don't, I mean, I don't know. There's, there's not a whole lot on here. Uh, yeah, there's just not a whole lot. Well, there you go. On to Ubisoft. <laughs> yeah. Ubisoft, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, for Ubisoft, I'm expecting to see uh, new Assassin's Creed. And Just Dance. Probably, yes, Just Dance. There's always a new Just Dance. Maybe a new Splinter Cell? Who knows? I would love to see what they're going to do with the new Splinter Cell. Uh, the, and as do a lot of people. There's probably going to be a new Tom Clancy game. Uh, you know, coming out. So there is that. Uh, point Break, Ghost Recon. Point Break. Point Break. Yeah. Or Breakpoint. My bad. <laughs> point Break. break point. How did I read that backwards? This let's see, it's kicking in. You Ooh. go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say it. You just made me spider web. Uh, <laughs> thanks a lot. That's not hard. That's well, not hard to do. Well, we, we rewatched Thor Ragnarok over the weekend. And I, I not only have ever seen the movie like three times, so I don't really re have a good, huge recall of the movie. But when Thor's trying to log into the Quinjet uh, computer. Yeah. And it's like, like, please state, you know, you know, he's like, Thor. And it's like, strongest Avenger. Access denied. Strongest Avenger. Access denied. Damn you, Stark. Point break. Access allowed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But, uh, of course, there's also uh, this. Uh, one of the things that I've heard that I, I was expecting to be there, but they're not going to. I guess they're going to have something next week is the Beyond Good and Evil 2. Uh, really? Yeah, I guess they're going to have like some sort of dem uh, trailer next week about it. That's so. surprising. I, I just read that today, so... You know, maybe I'm well, wrong. I hope that it's good. I mean, you'll mm -hmm. get to see it, stream it live. Yeah. So uh, I don't know what else. I mean, Ubisoft is kind of weird. Oh, I heard uh, the the whole rumor about the leaked uh, Ubisoft Pass. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, subscription service. I bet we'll see that. And and then they'll probably. I mean, who knows? Uh, there's rumors going around about a new Watch Dogs game, a Watch uh, Watch Dogs Three, uh, set in London. So. That hasn't been out for a couple of years, though, so we might be seeing the third one in that. Of course, that series has not been a super successful series uh, for them, as the first one kind of like had it came out stumbling out the gate. I heard the second one's good. I heard nothing but good things about the second game. It just because of the reaction of the first game, people kind of slept on the second one. Just to, eh, we'll we'll wait and see, you know. But uh, yeah, dude, Ubisoft. Uh, Maybe that new Assassin's Creed game. Maybe it is a Viking game. You know the whole Ragnarok thing. Yeah, maybe. But uh, 
The next one is one that I'm super excited for, and I know you are too. Uh, yeah. Square Enix. There's a lot that is going to be dropped at Square. So, as I try to get comfy here, the it is on Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9, 9 p.m. Eastern. We already know FF7 Remake going to be there. Mm-hmm. We already mm-hmm. know Avengers going to be right. there. That's two big games to me. Two. Two of the biggest. I got another. I just read this right before we started the show, and I didn't say anything because I wanted to get your reaction. Okay. Dying Light 2 is going to be published by Square. Okay. And it's going to be at Square's E3 event. I believe that, yeah. So that is another game that's going to be... going to get Dragon Quest Builders. Yep. Hmm. Yep, get it. Yeah, yeah, we'll get the Dragon Quest thing. Uh, Whatever is coming out for some of the other, uh, you know, Tokyo RPG Factory games or, you know... Maybe some DLC for Kingdom Hearts as well. Yeah, maybe some DLC for that. We'll, oh, we'll probably get a good look at the uh, expansion for FF14. Uh, they'll yes. probably showcase some of that. Uh, I don't know if we're getting another Tomb Raider. I'm not saying that's not. I'm not saying it won't happen because they seem to be pretty happy with it. But, right. But I don't know if we're going to see anything this year on it because the last one just came out last year. Yeah, I think this year. Is really going to be focused on Final Fantasy VII because mm-hmm. they know that game is just going to sell and sell and sell. So, well, we've talked about this. Do they do a two episodic three? Uh, we don't know, but we hope for we hope for two so that we don't have to wait as long. But I think that we will see a lot of stuff on seven this year and potentially a release window. I also think that they're going to really touch base on Marvel's Avengers. Uh, we're going to get some quick hits on like dragon quest, um, 11 S the definitive edition edition. We'll get a little bit on that. Uh, maybe some just cause Four. who knows? Um, uh- uh, I saw something here. Uh, I looked up and maybe an, uh, a new near, a new near game. Uh, yeah. And then also maybe we'll see the first makings of the, the sequel to Octopath. Yes. Also, there's one. It's uh, Aninaki. O n i n a k i. Anaki. Maybe. I don't know what that is. No idea. It was on my list. <laughs> yeah, and I'm. Uh, we're going to be streaming this together. Um, yes. Uh, b- specifically because the FF Seven, but I'm uh, also I'm also interested to seeing what they're bringing to the table with this Avengers game because I really liked Insomniac Spider Man game, and so I want to see what they're doing uh, for an Avengers game. Obviously, you would have a more, uh, you know, plate of heroes to choose from. So I'm excited to see what they're doing with it. And because I mean, also we have that, uh, we have, um, ultimate Alliance three, uh, yeah. you know, coming out for the switch, which is exclusive to the switch. And that's a different kind of Marvel game, but I want to see what kind of game this is. Other than I, that, I, I don't know, dude. I just, I think, I, I think it's going to be the main big two are going to get a lot of more time. And the other ones are going to get a little bit less time. Right. And then we got one more. Well, we got two. You keep leaving out the little guys. Who's the little guy? The uh, Devolver Digital. Oh, yeah, they're they're doing their thing. It is not a AAA press conference. It is just a bunch of indie games that they want to showcase this year, which one of those indie games last year was one of the biggest games and was up for game, game of the, of the year. year. So to rule this out, I, I don't think it should be because that Celeste, 
I've never heard nothing but praises for it. I need to pick it up. I need to play it. But check this out because the the PC world is just chocked full of indie, quirky, cool games that are are, are a blast to play, and you, you they may be exactly what you're looking for, and you never know it. So check it out. I mean, nobody says you got to watch the whole thing. I mean, it is at <laughs> 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Monday? So, sure. I'm not staying up for that one. I'll watch the highlights. But the big one from the big four, five, whatever now. Nintendo. N- Nintendo. So we, um, as this airs, as this airs this week, as this airs, uh, they, you know, they they did a Pokemon Direct, which we haven't watched yet. Which, which I will live stream that if I can. Um, but so that doesn't mean we won't see anything from Pokemon here. But they're probably going to be doing a lot of information dump on that one. And why would they be doing that, Mike? I don't know. Well, I mean, they have a lot of other games in development. There are a lot. Nintendo has got a potential lineup this year that is going to be uh, I'm thinking this is the year Nintendo. Nintendo's been running them out mm-hmm. pretty good each year, but I think they've got a lot of big titles. I mean, talking about Harvest um, or um, not Harvest um, yeah Animal Crossing we're going to see the new Animal Crossing um, there's a potential to see this a new Metroid game Metroid Prime 4 I I, I would love to see a little just uh, just give me a little, a little taste just a little we're obviously going to see a little bit of Pokemon uh, even yeah. though they are doing a Pokemon Direct for 4 there'll be a little bit there there always is um, you've got right around the corner after this uh, after E3 is going to be the new Super Mario Maker 2. Mm-hmm. We're going to see a little bit of that as well. Um, well, hold on. Okay, so we got to remember what Nintendo likes to do. They like to do this big uh, direct where they have updates and announcements, and they may save some of these uh, deeper looks for these things for their Treehouse event, which they do uh, throughout the day on right. Tuesday. Yes, yes. So uh, they, and, do, they do live plays mm-hmm, on yes. Treehouse. Yeah, so that's something to remember too. We we may actually not get during the actual direct Pokemon or Super Mario Maker since they've just did directs for those. Instead, sure. instead that may just be safe for the treehouse. What we may get is uh, maybe an update on Metroid, uh, Luigi's Mansion Three. They have Bayonetta Three. Uh, we'll definitely see something from Bayonetta. Yeah, and Luigi's Mansion. And then of course, like whatever else is kind of coming down the pipeline that they have not yet really wanted to announce yet or felt like now's a good time to just announce it because they do they've been partnering with a lot of different folks um the new um link's awakening we'll see some of that yes let me see more just a, just just a smidge. <laughs> i like the way you're like yes <laughs> just a smidge i want to see more oh my gosh uh, it looks great dude uh if, if i get no other game this fall if Last of Us Part Two is like, nope, we're not coming out in the fall, because I've already said I'm going to get this stranding probably at Christmas. I need to get Link's Awakening that way I have something to play in between uh, nap sessions with the new baby. So, I, I got a few. I've actually got some here. I pulled up a list. Uh, Tales of Z- Vesperia Definitive Edition. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We might get a little bit of that. Well, is that out yet? It is. Why is this bringing that up? I don't know. Ooh, Crash Team Racing. Yeah, that'll be out. 21st. 21st of June. Mm-hmm. So we may see like some, like how PlayStation had like a little bit of thing for that. You yeah. Know? Uh, we may see it like Switch and or Nintendo maybe partner with them and then maybe you'll have like a little crossover thing with Mario Kart. I just have some of these up here. Like they've got uh, Yoshi's Crafted World. That's already out. Yeah. Actually, that came out mm, two months ago. Yep. Like April, something like that. Animal Crossing. Luigi's Mansion. Obviously, Pokemon. Pokemon. Uh, Fire Emblem. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. The new Fire Emblem thing that uh, that they have coming, coming out, out July twenty sixth. Yeah. So yeah, that's ooh, hoping for a new Pikmin title. Uh, yeah, Pikmin. So I just got a quick little blurb. Uh, okay. Big, big, big apologies to you people out there if you just got your your ears blown out. Maybe I'll try and find that in the post and try and get that out of the audio version of the show. I didn't hear that. Well, you didn't, but they did because it's on speakers. That's what your line in is on. And you have uh, this stupid website has auto playing videos. I hate that. So big apologies if, if I was unable to edit that out. Xbox. I know we're talking about uh, talking about Nintendo, but Xbox E3 2019 showcase will feature more first party games than ever. Says Phil, says Phil Spencer. Awesome. Uh, he tweeted out just today. Uh, just 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 finishing our final E3 rehearsal here with the team in Redmond. Feel really good about the briefing. Lots to show. We have 14 Xbox Game Studio games in the show this year. More first party games than we've ever had in the show. Fun times. 14 exclusive. Well, verbatim. You know, let's take that word like across Xbox platforms. One that we forgot to mention. Hmm. Astral Chain. Oh crap! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Platinum Games. That is release date is tentative for August thirtieth. That was for Switch, right? Yes. Yeah, dude. I, I, dude. I am. I pulled up a better list. I am more intrigued this year than ever because of just how different it is. You know, this is just a different year in general. Man, I'm looking at that picture of uh, Link's Awakening. Mm -hmm. God, it looks good. You know what I'd like to see? Remake. Link to the Past. Well, yeah. Mic drop. Dude, Boom. Dude, you could just, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll be honest, you could just, like, just port the game over and charge 60 bucks and I'll still buy it. Well, the thing is, is, like, when you look at Link's Awakening, the, the photo that I have pulled up here looks like, um, I'm going to butcher the name of this, and you're going to, uh, Karaku Town? The town. Kiriko, the bird. Kiriko, yeah. Kiriko Town? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it looks like Kiriko Town, but you know the little wall that's up on the bottom where you could, that's where people would pin the chicken up and you'd beat the chicken until it summoned every chicken in the game to kill you? <laughs> yeah. Down there, it looks like it's a part of down there. So if Link's Awakening has, you know, already updated graphics of kind of Link to the Past. You could just kind of slap a whole new that ha slap that story in there and say, "Yeah, guys, guess what? Here's link to the past." I'd have a, I'd I'd have a fit. I'd, just, <laughs> I'd start screaming. Oh All my right. god! All right. <sighs> All right. I I muted you for just a second because I went to another website and a video's loading and I don't want it to blast out. So they can't hear you for 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 just yet. It's, it's still loading it, but I, um, I, I found an article that said uh, Marvel, Marvel Avengers game details leak ahead of E3 reveal, and um, the description from the Marvel showcase once read, according to PC Gamer, embrace your powers, enjoy key members of the, of the development team at Crystal Dynamics. And the creative team at Marvel Games as they talk exclusively about the upcoming Avengers game. There we go. Uh, now I'm able to. It it took that long to load that video. By the way, <laughs> took a long time. Anyway, uh, as they join, um, as they talk exclusively about the upcoming Avengers, this defining Avengers gaming experience, an epic action adventure game that that combine that combines cinematic storytelling with continuous single player and cooperative gameplay. Moderated by Andrea Rene, uh, assemble the team up to four players. Master extraordinary dif difficulties, customize your heroes to fit your playstyle, and combine powers to defend an ever expanding world under a constant threat. Well, hmm, interesting. It, it, so it's you know, so it's going to be multiplayer. It's going to be multiplayer. Maybe it's going to be. Uh, 
you know, they, they did say it's also single player as well and that you'll be able to customize it. So interesting. That's going to be cool. I wonder how many different uh, characters you're going to be able to play as. Man, I don't know. Because obviously you're going to have like some of the big you know, Hulk, Cap, Iron Man, probably Hawkeye. Now, is it, did they, it specified only two? Or for players? Co- it would be four. Four, four player co op. Which I wonder if that's same screen co op. I don't know. Or is it four same screen? Kind of like um, Ultimate Alliance. Ultimate Alliance. I don't know. I'm excited to see. But yeah, man. Uh, I'm super excited for this year's E3. We definitely have uh, a, a, just a different year with Sony being MIA and them doing their own thing. Uh, of course, we we are dying to know more uh, from the new for the new consoles. We're going to be they've sort of revealed the like it feels under like underwhelming to have Sony reveal their new console the way that they did, but they did it because it was going to leak anyway. Uh, right, they just wanted to get ahead of the game. But uh, you know, obviously, going to be seeing some some sneak peeks at the new Xbox console. They're not going to reveal it because why would you when it's going to release next year? Uh, so they're going to just show you just a little bit of sprinkles, you know. Right. And, of course, I mean, we have the one that you and me are most excited for, new FF7 uh, details. I'm so excited to hear anything at this point. Just just now, give me anything. Now, the rumor is, and you told me this, that at the end of Square's conference, that there might be a demo available. I don't on know. PlayStation. Now, I want to throw this out there. If this demo is available, I may not sleep that night. Same. I may be sitting there playing this freaking game all night long and just pull a double and go to work like I did on Monday or Tuesday and just be tired of shit and not care because I got to play however many hours. Now, now, please, Square, do not make this... Oh, you only get 30 minutes. Yeah, like, like like Resident Evil 2. One shot. You only get one chance to play. And that's where, uh, if I'm doing that, I'm I'm going to wait and do it when I can sit here and I can record it. And then I can yep. go back through the recording and <laughs> dissect everything that I might have missed. Yep. Oh, anyway, I think that's about going to cover it for us because you can, guys can join us during E3. As we said... During Microsoft's press conference, during uh, Bethesda's, I'll be streaming that. And then on Square Enix, definitely streaming that. The other ones, we will be at work. We'll be unable now, to watch those Microsoft live. Microsoft will be with a guest yes. star. And uh, maybe you guys get some extra content over on the Podcast Trippy Network yeah. from me and Tyler. Yeah, yeah. Tyler is invited to, to watch it along with us. And so... That is gonna that that's a whole flo- uh, you know, As I said, I am super excited to see what Microsoft is showing. I'm super head scratchingly curious to see what Bethesda is even going to say. I'm I'm super excited to see more FF7, and I'm even ex- intrigued after all these years, uh, almost two and a half, to finally see something from the Avengers project. And then also for Nintendo, I'm excited to see what's coming on the pipeline for them because they're killing I it. Can, I can guarantee Seven is going to be the last thing Square shows. Probably, yeah. Absolutely. Because you don't want a mic drop in the beginning unless you're going to mic drop the entire time. Well, and if you mic drop at the beginning, you got to mic drop at the end. So. Yep. So they could just say Seven, show a ton of gameplay, and then at the end of it be like, by the way, more seven, and then they show it, and then it says, "Now ava- demo now available in the PlayStation Store." Were and they- literally, the co- the conference is going to be emptied, and everybody's going to leave and go play Final Fantasy Seven. Or what about this? What if they're like, "Demo available now, pre order for release September tenth, twenty nineteen." Pre-order available. Pre-order available. Game releases September tenth. I, I hope why they do- don't say it's available because damn it, I'm gonna look now. You got me confused now. I'm, now I'm, I'm I made that up. I made it up. Why? I know you did. Why? You because worry. it's a, because September tenth is around the September 
ninth launch day. Yeah. Of the original game back in 1997. So, could it be? No, I don't think so. I'm just going to be like that. No. Do I think the game's coming out before next E3? Yeah. I think it is. I think before E3 2020, we're going to have FF7 Part 1 in our hands. So, I want to throw this out there. I pulled it up, and obviously you can pre-order the regular edition. It's all... Everybody knows how Amazon works. But right now, right underneath that is Kingdom Hearts 3 PS4 at Amazon twenty eight ninety six. Really? That's good. Literally right here, right now. And I was like, oh. That's cool. And Final Fantasy 12, the Zodiac Age for PS4 is at fourteen eighty eight. Really? Yes. That's a good deal. It's usually 20 bucks. So it's five dollars off, but the big one for me is the fact that Kingdom Hearts is over fifty percent off. Yeah, absolutely. So pick that up if you have not picked it up. Pick it up. I haven't picked it up, but I also haven't played any of them. You have not, and I'm afraid that you'll get sucked in. No, I just, it's one of those things where I get play and I'll play and play and I'm, I'll get burned out and then I won't finish the series. Mm, Because there's so many games. So many games. There's so much to it that I'm just going to be like, all right, I'm done. Because I like my Apex. I like being able to play a match here or two and then just be like, all right, I'm done. I like my multiplayer games. So it's funny that we're fairly opposites with that. Like, I like my RPGs. But I really like my online games. I really, really don't like my RPGs. Titanfall 2 on PS4 right now on there is 7 bucks. Ooh, that's a pretty good deal. Yeah, on PS4. Under $10, yeah, under $10. We have, I don't know why, that I, 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 I clicked under $10 and it shows me Call of Duty World War II for 23 Huh, uh, the Power A. GameCube controller is forty three ninety seven right now. On Xbox One, uh, Titanfall Two is, is is a flat five bucks. Ooh. Mm hmm. That can't, freaking controller looks so cool. You can't beat five bucks, dude. Sorry, I'm over here staring at the uh, GameCube Switch controller. <laughs> I'm literally looking at it like Power A's got it on sale now, and I'm like. Mm. It's it's battery though, so it's wave bird style. Yeah, but also guys, for you know, for all the E three stuff that's going on, stay tuned for sales for for all of your, uh, for for all of your stuff like PlayStation uh, Days of Play, your Xbox, Microsoft sales, Nintendo's Steam, is your Steam sale, big Steam sales coming up, and then of course, uh, uh, I think the as we say this, I think. That the uh, Epic Game Store sale is still going on, but I'm not for certain. But it is. That is still going on. When I looked at Epic Game Store, they still had the sale going on. Yeah, so I mean, there's not much to choose from right now. But the thing is, is they're still making waves. Borderlands Three is still not up there. It's still been pulled off. It won't be up until after the after the sale, sale is ended. Which I don't blame him. I mean, <sighs> Epic, I I feel like you can get a mulligan here mm-hmm. on this one, but I think that if you do it again, that's that's going to be too detrimental to you. Probably, yeah. Yeah, probably. So, be mindful. Absolutely. Be courteous. Be courteous. Be your software providers. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> be courteous. That reminds me really quick before we get out of here of the first uh, Black Friday thing that I went to over in Lafayette when we were standing in line to get the old computer monitor. And we were in the freezer aisle. And all the movies and games were out there by the fruit, the like the fruits and veggies. Uh it just bundled together. There's just a bunch of people out there. Like it was so intimidating. It was, so we were like in a line in the freezer aisle, like pretty, you know, you know, pretty all by ourselves. Well, you know, a, a, like like a little chilly, you know. Right, 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 yeah. 
and when the at eight o'clock, the movies and game sales started, and I just remember like it sounded like a mob, like it was already loud in there, and it was just like this is this is roar, and you heard just rustling and all this stuff, and you hear people Walmart workers shouting over. Mm-hmm. I'm like, and we were just staring at each other like, somebody's gonna die out there. And thankfully, nobody did. Uh, and right, I I even got like, I think I got like a game that day. It was like half off. It was like only like thirty bucks. The, like the game, it just came out two weeks prior, and I was able to pick it up even though after I was standing there for another like an hour or hour and a half or whatever it was. And I, I we we walked all the way to the back of the store to the game section in the back. Where they had the the doors just open, and what's funny is that you the the aisles were impossible to navigate. People were just standing there, but if you cut yep. through the clothes, you could get over there because nobody was in the clothes section. Here's the, here's a, a little known fact for those Black Fridayers. That to be the first one in for like those movies and video games and stuff doesn't matter. Um, no, they have bunches every of them year, every year. I always wait. The last place I go is Best Buy unless I absolutely need something like a TV or something there. But I always go three, four hours after their big drop of everything, Mm -hmm. and everything gets restocked. And I walk real casually up there, get my game, and walk off. I've done that three times. So I... I'm not saying do that, and and then you miss something, and you'd be like, that son of a bitch, he told me. Test it first. Go there, get what you want. Then come back later. And if it's restocked, you know that yours restocks. But the one in Bloomington, which is the one that I used to go to, it restocked. Well, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah so for, I, for, like for, I, for your games, movies, and stuff, they will. But if you have, like, TV doorbusters and stuff like that, yeah, they have the limited. Door busters, you, you, that they're doorbusters. You, you've got to be there. Yeah, that's why I stay away from those because one, I don't want to wait in line on Thanksgiving. Well, and then now it's like at three p.m. <laughs> yes, you know it's like I'm still di- I'm not even done eating. I'm I, I'm standing in line with my food. You know, right? It, it's getting ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But do uh, and, and you know what? Anymore, those Black Friday sales really not worth it. Sometimes uh, they they have some cool stuff. I remember this past year, I was pretty unimpressed with a lot of things. But like, I'll do our local, our local Walmart here. Like, it's I, I've been out there during that. Uh, and uh, number one, I was out there to get specific things, and number two, I was out there to get food for the night, which was right. you know, yeah, I was actually that guy. Because I remember back when you know during that first one I told you about, there was a dude with a full cart of groceries, and I'm just like. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, like, dude, dude, what are you doing here? Like, you know what's really coming, right? <laughs> do you not know? Like, like, how do you not know? Did you not realize you know, they have every aisle open? That never you, happens. You literally, I mean, maybe it is the best time to go get it because they'll have all the aisles open and he's not worried about any of that crap. So he just goes, grabs it, walks right out the door. <laughs> maybe he's got just something. We don't have here, man. <laughs> Maybe. You don't know. <laughs> anyway. I mean, it, in theory, it sounds like a great idea. They have all those lines open, and you don't have to wait for your shit. You can get in before everyone else, get your groceries, and walk out. Dude, I remember uh, we got the monitor. I got the game, and then we were and we went to go leave, and we got stuck in, in, oh, like in one of the register aisles for about 30 minutes. Because uh, somebody bought uh, two iPads, two iPads. Somebody bought two of them, and when you bought them, they came with Apple gift cards, and they could not get them to activate. Now that's not Walmart's fault. The, a lot of that is because of the sale. Because I, I know that we have been before in the past. Uh, before they started scrolling back the time, because this this is when the movie sale started at midnight, and uh, we were there. We waited. We got there at like eight thirty, and we waited for three and a half hours. Because like we didn't want to go home, because then we wouldn't want to come back out. Because man, because I've been up all day. We were on seconds, and it was like I I'm gonna go home and go to sleep. 
because we I, I had to get up early to go to my family's Thanksgiving. And we, and we had like a whole bunch of movies. We're going to go up there and get them. And then they wouldn't, the sale wouldn't even activate for them. And they're like, yeah, well, we'll, we'll hold them for you and you can come back later. And so I just had an article pop up that says Sony confirms PS5 won't be joining the new PlayStation, won't be joined by new PlayStation VR hardware. It won't be launching with new hardware yet. No, I did read that the other day. Oh, oh man. It's thundering down here. That was loud. Yeah, it's been thundering here too. I've been kind of weary about it, you know. Yeah, well, being struck by lightning and all. I feel you. But anyway, if that's the case, we can hurry up and get off here. There's nothing more, nothing more to really yeah, cover yeah, for there's E3. Nothing more other than us just nitpicking around the internet. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, guys, I'm super excited for E3. Please join us on twitch.tv slash Game Addicts Play. Join us on our social media at Game Addicts Play on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll be posting all throughout. And, and, and interacting with all you guys during E3. And, of course, you can always check out the podcast. Each and every single Wednesday, we're live on our on, on Twitch and on Facebook. We're also on audio, on, on podcast services all around the world, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Podbean, Google, and on YouTube on Fridays, where the video version of the live stream goes up on Fridays. So, yeah. so subscribe to us there. With that being said, Mike, looking forward to E3. I know. I don't, I just don't know what I'm gonna do with seven. We're gonna if find a demo. I'm gonna cry. Yeah, we're gonna find out, man. Gonna join. Find out. Please join us, guys. Until then, I've been Brando, and I've been Mike. We'll see you then, guys. Game on. Game on.